Hey there everyone and welcome back to more Duke Nukem, uh, Land of the Babes. I am still Negroth, by the way. So with our escape from Silverback Stronghold, we are now in See you later, some Dutch. underground mining facility, it appears. And also somehow through our teleportation activities, we have also gotten Duke a new outfit. Uh, I will say one thing though, I will apologize ahead of time as... Uh, for some reason, while I was recording this particular episode, it was just causing mess. me no end of troubles, I suppose. And I also decided to go Ooh, a bit crap. crazy with the freezer because it actually does pretty well on this level. Duke, Silverback's troops are starting to withdraw. That's because I just retired the hairy bastard. He's gonna look good stuff. Great news, Duke. I knew you could do it. Things are finally going our way. Silverback has been up to something with your captured Resistance members. He's been freezing them and preparing them for shipment somewhere. I'm following the trail of Frozen Babes now to see where it leads and what they're up to. Duke, be careful and bring our women back, please. So with that information, we are getting something more of the plot. I use the word plot very loosely as uh, women are getting kidnapped, which has always been the plot, and is waiting for you. something may or may not be happening, and we really don't know at this point. Uh, but we are facing a new enemy. Uh, they apparently are called the African Corps, which uh, apparently are pigs with blowguns. They are... They do a very minimal amount of damage, but their weapon is hit scan, so I guess that can be a bit of an annoyance. But, you know, they don't do knockback, so that's at least a plus. And you don't really have to uh, get these women out of here, but it does, it does give you a little bit of health, so it's always nice in case you need it. And it's a lot better than accidentally blowing them up and losing, like, 70 health or how mu however much it is. It's a lot. But yeah, like I was saying before, I had I had never really used the Who's freezer next? before, but it does a pretty good job whenever you can easily get to the enemy, which in this case is fairly Who's often. I mean, uh, we will start to see some of the baboon grenade launcher enemies in just a little bit, but most of the stage is actually just these African core Let's pigs. Rock. I guess they'd be warthogs with blowguns. But yeah, we're still trying to figure out why the aliens are transporting the carbonite women here. This ought to fill up in no time. And as you can see in the next room over, which is where we're going to be heading in just a second, they apparently are just randomly leaving floating blocks of women around, so uh, whether or not that's symbolism for how 3D Realm sees women, that's uh, completely up to you, the viewer. I would say, yeah, pretty much they have no real respect for women, but um, it might just be a few people there. I wouldn't say the entire company is sexist, just the people in power. Uh, also, you can see here that uh, I'm not that great with aiming with the sniper rifle, especially in, without the lock-on. But that's okay, because it, it still does a reasonable amount of damage. And you are kind of limited to what you can actually shoot in the water, so... You know, it, I didn't have what I would normally want. And I know it's a bit hard to see, but there actually is a crack down here in the wall, and I want to save some ammo. So, with a few throwing knives, we can now break through the wall and continue on to the first secret. And in this secret is another creepy misogynistic thing. It's apparently the eviscerated corpse of Laura Croft. Uh, 3D Realm still showing that they have uh, their good sports in making misogynistic horrible jokes. And that's, uh, that's okay, because, you know, IDOS didn't succeed, kind of. So, I, I guess everyone got their comeuppance eventually. 
a decade later. But we now need to get out of the water, which for some reason was causing me a bit of an issue, but it's not. It's really not as difficult as it looked. And they really want you to, like, jump across these carbonite blocks, but you know what? Jetpack. So, uh, yet again, fuck you, jumping puzzles, because I don't have time for that nonsense. Yeah, the levels actually seem to be getting a tad bit longer than they previously were, but they're still not that horribly long. And for some reason, yet again, I, I started to run into a bit of slowdown. It doesn't last forever, and I get rid of it toot sweet, to use some French on you natural viewers here. But by operating the switch here, we actually turn on a nearby elevator. We could have gotten to the elevator beforehand, but there would have been no reason to go there as it was off. And I just decided to speed this bit up here because we're just going to be backtracking through stuff we've already seen. And I know you all love to see backtracking. But after you have turned on the elevator, a few more pig African yeah. pigs spawn. You can actually, if you get here fast enough, you can actually see them spawn right in front of you. And I think you can actually skip over a few because you're just, you're basically getting to a point where you, uh, you shouldn't be getting so fast. But, you know, that, that's the kind of pro playing you get whenever you watch uh, Nigger Off LP. Piggy, piggy, piggy. But there are yeah, some more bonus. baboons and African yeah, pigs waiting up. for us. I'm, not, I'm also not sure if you can get any kind of racism from African core, but it's, uh, it's time to get in the elevator. Going up. But I'd rather be going down. There are seriously no ends to the amount of awkward one-liners that 3D Realms can poop out. But we are actually <laughs> getting further and further into the alien installation proper. Uh, as to what we'll actually be finding there, I'm not Daddy. actually sure. Inside of a in-space crane which only goes to say that the the developer of this particular Duke Nukem game and also the developers of Time to Kill possibly want to side with uh, anthropomorphic aliens that want to rape women. So, uh, take that how you will. I personally take it as awful and atrocious, but, you know, that's only, that's only my common sense. But we uh, just shot out a... a breakable wall that leads into a secret, but we'll be going to that in just a second. First though, the actual entire point of this, even though it's not really understood when you first get into the level, is that you're wanting to build a bomb. Why are you wanting to build a bomb? Well, we don't know. We don't know yet. It's an explosives detonator. Rock on. But we now have the detonator to do so. Now we just had to swim back out of this structure. I'm not even sure what this is supposed to be. It could be a destroyed building, some remnant of the past, but as to why it had a dry, usable detonator in it, I, I really don't know. I assume it's because video game logic and space-time continuum. But by going into this secret, we are able to get the quest item for the stage, which is always useful if not utterly confusing within the confines of the game and you have to be very careful when getting back out because there's pretty much only one little area that won't cause you to go sliding back it's not too hard to see but it can be a bit of annoying if uh, you're playing this on a normal TV somewhere in the past and a few more grenade launcher baboons spawned and you you honestly have no chance of dodging them or getting the drop on them, but they if you have uh, the armor Let's that you picked run. up down the water, they only do like three damage and they they end up healing you for eight. So, for all you mathematicians out there, you no come game, out ahead. No game. And actually, if you look at my health right now, I'm actually doing fairly well, uh, all things considering that, especially with the freezer, you can kill things pretty quickly. Amateurs. I will say that the first time I was playing through this area, I ended up getting 
instant killed by a barrel that got blown up by one of their grenades, so fuck you. Mm, that's a pretty pretty bland slide. So now it comes to light why we actually need the bomb in the first place, and it only took 10 minutes into the level to actually get the point of the level. Thankfully though, the actual parts to make the bomb are not too hard to get. Ooh, ooh, what a mess. The only difficulty is dealing with the ooh, random crap. slowdown that occurs with uh, trying to emulate this wonderful game. A spool of wire. And with uh, those ig with those wires, I initially thought that I was actually done, but it, I think I just ran into a bug the first time I played this level. You actually need one more item, and the first time I did this level, you never actually needed that item. Which is a bit weird, because the last item is actually pretty important for a bomb. I mean, we got the, we got the detonator, and we have the wires connecting to the detonator, so... What else would you be missing from a bomb? About. This with the uh, if you said Die the actual explosives, you would be right. So with a bit of exploration up a nearby pathway, it's actually... We'll be getting the rest of the bomb parts in just a second here. First though, it's time to realize that we don't really need any of this stuff. Also, if you want to, you can destroy this this bookcase right here. It basically will lead back down to the quest item in case you missed it previously. And in this room here is actually going to be the explosives. I assume it's plastic from looking at it. Explosives. And with the explosives obtained it's just a short walk back after we deal with some more baboons. They are not too difficult to deal with, honestly, especially if you have armor. They just, they're kind of a joke. Hell oh, yeah, I love blowing shit up. I too enjoy blowing shit up. It's just usually I blow shit up in better games. But with that landslide out of the way, we're almost done with the level. We Ooh, actually just meat. have a boss to deal with, but first... There's this horribly complicated crawling and climbing and, ah, oh, you know what, fuck it. Jetpack. Yeah, you could go down there and you could deal with the lava and doing intricate jumping and, eh, no. We got a jump, we got a jetpack, so. Screw you, game. Now, you may be wondering what highly dangerous boss we could have to deal with, and if you said, uh, pink pulsating triangle, uh, you'd be right. There you go. Uh, grand prize goes to whoever thought it would be a good idea to face a pulsating pink diamond. I, I guess it's supposed to be a computer core, yeah, as they call it the did. flux grid. I'm not sure what it's controlling the flux of, or if they even understand what flux means, but it's uh, it's basically kind of like the first real boss we fought, which was getting into a tower and shooting at uh, a rather you annoying, biggie, 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 you know, biggie. plane or jet, I suppose. You know, Every so often, some enemies will spawn, and you won't be able to damage the Looks flux like the anymore. Out. And uh, it's really not that hard. I mean, the enemies are nice enough to stand in positions where you can easily kill them by killing the boss. You also get a hundred health, so I mean we were already at like 180, so, so we're pretty much completely topped off. And you know, there's a few more baboons that spawn down there, but you can just get in your nice, safe little turret, and it's fairly easy to take down. But with that, it's pretty much the end of the level. So this is Negros saying bye, and see you next time more for more Land of the Babes.